This video is on chronic kidney disease. The definition is when there is an abnormal kidney structure or function that is present for more than three months with implications for health. There are three ways to classify chronic kidney disease. We can classify it using the glomerular filtration rate, GFR, or the presence of albuminuria, where there is albumin in the urine, and the cause of kidney disease which can be further divided into primary renal disease and systemic disease. So first, we look at the classification of chronic kidney disease by GFR, the glomerular filtration rate, with the unit of ml per minute per 1.73 meter square. So it can be classified into G1 to G5, according to the GFR. So G1 is if the glomerular filtration rate is more than 90, G2 is 60 to 89. G3 can be divided into G3A and G3B. And then there is G4, which is 15 to 29, indicating severe reduced in glomerular filtration rate. And G5, which is less than 15, indicating kidney failure. The second way of classification of CKD is by the albuminuria. The amount of albumin in the urea, in the urine. So there are three categories, A1, A2, and A3. And you can see this table. It's classified by looking at the albumin excretion using the unit mg per 24 hours and the albumin creatinine ratio using the unit of mg per millimole. Okay, so A3 is the most severe, A1 is least severe. So next, classification of CKD based on the underlying disease. These are some of the examples of the causes of CKD. And it can be divided into primary renal disease or systemic disease. The most common causes of CKD are diabetes, which stands for 24% of the cases, glomerulonephritis, around 13%, and hypertension or renal vascular disease. So moving on to the symptoms. These are some of the symptoms that a CKD patient may complain of. So there might be symptoms of fluid overload when there is renal failure, like shortness of breath and peripheral edema, where they complain of facial swelling or leg swelling or abdominal distension. Other symptoms are anorexia, nausea and vomiting, restless legs, and some uremic symptoms like fatigue, weakness, pruritus, and also other symptoms are bone pain and in women we have to ask about amenorrhea whereas in men we can ask about importance so next on physical examination we have to look out for some signs of CKD for peripheral examination look for um, peripheral edema any signs of peripheral vascular disease or neuropathy look for rash gouty top 5 joint disease and also remember to look for any arterial venous fistula. We have to pop it for the trill and also auscultate for the brute to check whether it's functioning well. Look for signs of immunosuppression and uremic flap or that might indicate um, severe kidney failure. For the face, on general examination, we can look for any paler, centelasma or jaundice and also these other features. And other, investi uh, other examination, we have to look at the neck, look for any raised JVP due to fluid overload. Let's look for a tunneled line. If removed, we can look for a small scar over the internal jugular and a larger scar in the breast pocket area. Look for a scar from parathyroidotomy and lymphadenopathy. For cardiovascular, uh, check the blood pressure and look for any previous scar look for signs of cardiomegaly like displaced apex beat for respiratory um, look for pulmonary edema or illipusion abdomen look for any uh, PD catheter or scars from previous catheter there are just small scars just below the umbilicus and to the side of the midline and also look for signs of previous transplant and on abdominal examination, we have to bellot the kidneys because um, one of the expected findings is bellotable polycystic kidney. 
that could have caused renal failure. Mobile investigation can be divided into blood investigation, urine investigation, imaging, and histology. So first for blood investigation, you can do full blood count to check for expect to see normal chromic normocytic anemia, bills and creatinine to assess the renal function, glucose level to indicate diabetes mellitus, see the severity. Uh, calcium is expected to be low, phosphate is high, and the parathyroid hormone is expected to be high. Other blood investigation we can do is to look for these antibodies, which could suggest for the specific cause of the chronic kidney disease. So next, urine investigation. You can do urine dipstick, culture and sensitivity, if suspect painful infection causing the kidney disease, and check the albumin or protein to creatinine ratio. For imaging, we can do renal ultrasound to assess the size, symmetry, anatomy of both the kidneys, the cortical medullary differentiation, and also exclude any obstruction causing the uh, kidney disease. For histology, in some cases, we can consider renal biopsy. For example, if the disease is rapidly progressive or suspecting for nephrotic syndrome, systemic disease or acute kidney injury without recovery, despite all the management done. For management of chronic kidney disease, these are the five main principles of management, which includes appropriate referral to nephrology. We have to know when we have to refer to nephrology unit, where I will talk about the indications later on. Second is the treatment to slow down the progression of the renal disease. This includes controlling the blood pressure and controlling the uh, glucose level, target HbA1c, and also adjusting the lifestyle on exercise, healthy weight, and stop smoking. Third, treatment of renal complications of CKD. I will talk about it later on. And the treatment of other complications of CKD, for example, CKD can cause cardiovascular disease. So some of the medications that we can give depending on the patient's condition, some of them are like antiplatelets for those who are at risk of atherosclerotic events, and also st uh, statin for primary and secondary prevention of cardiovascular disease. And finally is preparation for renal replacement therapy, which includes some choices like dialysis or renal transplant. So let's take a look at the complications of CKD. First, first complication of CKD is anemia. So for example, if the EGFR is less than 60, we have to check the hemoglobin to look for anemia. Second complications like acidosis, where the management is, we can consider to give sodium bicarbonate supplements for those patients with EGFR less than 30 and low serum bicarbonate. Third complication is edema, which is a very common complication. So for patients who have edema of the leg, for example, we have to give, we have to restrict the fluid and sodium intake, and they may need some high doses of loop diuretics like furosemide. Fourth complication is CKD bone mineral disorders. In CKD patients, the CKD causes an increase in the serum phosphate level and reduce hydroxylation of the vitamin D by the kidney. So in these cases, we have to measure the calcium level, the phosphate level, the parathyroid hormone levels as well. Okay. Some of the medications we can give are like phosphate bin binders or give vitamin D supplements. Lastly, re restless legs and or cramps. This is also one of the complications of CKD. So when do we have to refer the patient to go to the nephrology unit? These are some of the indications. First is if it is a stage G4 and G5 CKD. Second, if there is proteinuria where the albumin creatinine ratio is more than 70, unless it is due to diabetes and already treated, then we have to refer. The third is proteinuria with hematuria. Fourth is declining EGFR. Fifth, poorly controlled hypertension despite already giving at least four antihypertensive drugs. And the last indication is if it is a known or suspected 
rare or genetic cause of a CKD. We have to refer to the nephrologist for further management. This is all for this video. Thank you.